Okay guys, so I'm going to be showing you and telling you how to care for a baby ringneck snake and how I set my enclosure up for a baby ringneck snake. So right here's the basic setup that I made for him. It's very simple, it's just this old Tupperware container with some leaves back here which was dried until I missed the enclosure a couple times. Got a little water dish with the water ball cap. And I got this little thing over here. I don't even know what it is, but it works. But it's about what your setup should look like for a baby ringneck snake. Now, they're not too bad caring for them. Now, I miss this enclosure about two or three times a day. Once in the morning, once about midday, once in the evening. Keep them humidity levels up. As you can see how humid it is on that. Because they like having a nice humid place. It'll make them feel more at home. Now, the way I set this enclosure up, just got a rock from outside. So I kind of dug that out with my hand, made like a little cove down in there. And I piled all these leaves up in the corner for him to go hide in, which is mainly his favorite hiding spot. Which I'll get to him here in just a minute. But I found the best way to feed these guys is to put them in like a little icing container or something. Something like this is what I put him in. So a couple chunks of earthworm, that way the worms can't get away and you really can't get away from the worms. Now, yes, this is a wild-caught snake, but it's best of wild catch the babies to keep because you're not really taking a breeding female or male away from the wild. I mean, I really don't like catching wild animals and keeping them, but he would have most likely got ate by one of our chickens or anything else because he is so close to where all of our chickens scratch around. That's how I really found him because it's over flipping rocks where he scratched the rocks down the bank all the time, so he probably ended up getting eaten anyway, so I brought him in the house. Now, I did assist feed him the first time. Now, assist feeding is not quite force feeding. There's a difference in it. But he's probably over hiding in these leaves right now. He is super tiny. He's probably this year's hatchling. Right there he is. As you can see, right there he is. Super tiny compared to my finger. A pile of his leaves back up here. Back to what I was saying, assist feeding and force feeding is two different things. Assist feeding is just opening the snake's mouth and placing the prey item in its mouth and letting him do the rest. Which that's why I done with him and he's done pretty good with it. But then I also offered him some food without that doing that and he took it finally. But he's not really too hard to care for. Now most people say it's a challenge keeping these guys, but it's really not too bad of a challenge so far. I've had him in this for probably about three days so far. He's been doing pretty good. I mean, it's a big enough setup for him. I mean, you could keep him in something smaller than this if you have to. Not like a smaller lunch thing, probably about half the size of this, because they're not very big snakes. And once they get bigger, I would suggest like a 10-gallon tank, maybe even a 20-gallon long once they reach full length. But that won't happen for at least another two or three years. Now, it's like I said, this is kind of a task for me as well because I've never attempted to keep a ringneck snake before. I mean, I had one a little while back but I ended up releasing him back into the wild because my aunt really didn't like him in the house when she found out about it. So, you know, this one here is just a little baby and she really don't care for it. I mean, it's not going to hurt nothing. It's so small. But this is a basic setup. This is a Tupperware bowl that was outside for a little while. Well, it was outside for I don't know. So, got cracks. I put me a little piece of tape right there, fixed a the crack, and found a lid in the house. And this turned out to be a setup. Now, I'm going to get this guy and handle him for a second and show him to you guys a little bit better and show you how really small he is. If I can get to him. There's his tail. You go inside the leaf? No, you're underneath the leaf. You got to be very gentle with these guys. That's how small they are. I'm putting them right here on the kitchen table for just a minute. As you can see, he is so tiny. You can't go underneath their house. Oof, I can get him. Down here. Oh, he's musking me. Much once I handle him a little bit, you should get used to it. Oh, back in your enclosure you go. There's a leaf. I'm going underneath the leaf. But I don't really know how to tell the difference between a male and a female. He's kind of small for doing that as well. 
he and or she, but I said I do not have a name for this guy yet, so if you guys want a name, leave it down in the comments below. But it's pretty basic caring for these guys, I mean, as like I said, miss the enclosure at least two or three times a day. Keep If you see that along the sides of your enclosure, you're doing a good job at misting it. But you don't want to miss it to where the ground's soaked, as you can see. This here's just like a moisty ground, it's not like really like mud. It's still crumbly and stuff. You don't want to miss it so much it makes the thing like muddy, because I can cause them a... I'm a... I can't remember what they're called, but it cause blisters on your snakes, basically, because the ground is way too wet. Uh, you want to keep misting it, keep misting it, keep misting it. Just about, keep it to at least three times a day, if that. Sorry for getting quiet there for a second. I'm trying to clean this thing so I can show it to you guys as well. All right here's what I feed him in just an empty icing container. I should put him in there along with whatever I'm feeding him. That way I can kind of get used to eating until I can get him eating good enough. I can just kind of feed him in his enclosure. Simple icing container. Make sure you poke holes in the lid. That way they got air. Because I put do not use on it. That way you don't really use it because we don't want nobody getting salmonella poisoning. But the leaf out of your water bowl. But yeah, caring for these guys is pretty basic. It's not too awful bad. Just like I said, it's pretty simple. Now, uh, he's the second reptile I've got. I also have a common snapping turtle, which I've had for four years. I caught him as a hatchling as well. Oh. He poked his head up. He poked his head up. The tiny snakehead. There he is next to my finger, so you can see how small this guy really is. My guy is tiny. It's like, what the heck? I'm gone. <laughs> He's gonna come up the other side of it. But I mean, these guys can be also entertaining to watch, especially at night time, because these guys are nocturnal. If you watch them at night time, it's probably the best time to really watch them active, which it's night time right now. It's about, it's 10.03 right now, and I had the lights off in the kitchen and everything else, which is guys are being kept on the kitchen table as of right now. But, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, whenever you do feed these guys, if you do take up the task of taking a baby ring next snake, small earthworms are, is what I suggest is what he does the best with. I mean, earthworms are probably as big around as his head. Now, length don't really matter, but you, I would suggest cutting up into little pieces. At least probably about that big. About as big, about as, big as a snake's head. Maybe about, I don't know, about as big as a snake's head and a little bit of his body. Because if you get two big chunks, they really won't eat it. They'll eat it halfway and they'll like regurgitate it for some reason. But if you get smaller chunks, they'll eat the whole thing. Right here's a prime example. A smaller chunk that I had in his closure from earlier. I'm trying to see if you'd eat earthworms without me really having to drop my finger please that chunk's probably about that big for a snake of that size which is pretty reasonable I think he's trying to get inside the leaf right now but that's gonna be it for this video if I just share this info with you guys and what I've learned from keeping this guy for a little bit and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video if you guys want to see updates on this guy just leave it down in the comments below and also we're looking for a name for him so if you guys have a good name for a little snake like this just leave it down in the comments below as well and we'll see you guys in the next video